Well, it's not uh, beautiful welding, but it's not bad. Not bad for Harbor Freight. You know what I'm saying? And we'll give you a side view. No, I don't have my uh, I don't have my fluid drag head on here right now, so it's going to be a little jumpy. I'll pull you around the side and show you what the whole purpose of this was. Okay, here we go with the shaky cam. This is the whole point of this exercise. I have extended the uh, frame. Um, I think it's like ten and a half or eleven inches. I'm not exactly sure at the moment. And uh, this angle piece is to uh, tie the frame into the narrower piece and also to give it the look of Model A and uh, early Ford frames where they had a natural taper towards the front. And uh, the outside piece is more for looks than anything else because the actual frame member is this piece of 2x2 uh, two two tubing which originally was part of a weightlifting bench why all the holes in it and uh, so yeah that brings it together um, I didn't weld it on tight all the way along there's no need of it I just tacked it on and uh, I did weld it solid around the front could use a little more grinding but I'm not doing all the finished stuff right now there's a couple of plug welds there didn't completely fill in the hole there's another plug weld in there and I think that's all on the top but there's two plug welds on the side there and there and you can see it didn't fill in all the way around and I actually had to go to a lower heat range when I got down the bottom because this piece here is so thin uh, without something behind it it was burning through and I think you can see a little bit of a filler piece I need to do down there yet but that'll all get smoothed out uh, when we go to finishing it off and uh, the welds aren't too bad for an old guy with shaky hands and a Harbor Freight welder you know and after they ground down you know they look even better so that's one on the front and here's the thing with uh, doing a four-wheel vehicle Unlike the gadget bike, when you did one thing, it was one and done. But with this, you got to double it, you know. So uh, two frame rails means two frame horns on the front, and then we're going to put a uh, a similar piece of this square tubing across for our front cross member, and one of those larger pieces down there is going to go. Um, back here and we'll get welded on originally it would have bolted on you can see where the bolt holes are and where the rust is where it had been bolted on but it's going to get welded on now and probably um, I'm going to trim it down so it will fit inside of these welds and then um, and then just weld it here and I can weld it from the bottom as well make it nice and solid and uh, that should do the job and let me kick this thing here off the back this will come down on its own if I let it this is a piece of fence post that I put on the back here and it's more or less tacked on I'll have to flip it over and do the bottom side and I haven't cleaned it at all but this will do me good on the back and it will serve a dual purpose. Let me kick these puppies back up here so I can give you an idea of what's going on for our rear suspension. This is what I'm thinking. This is the front fork off of a mountain bike. It has both springs and shock absorbers inside there and uh, evidently these tubes here are a press fit into this top part of the fork uh, so whether I can get them off of there or cut this off or I don't know but I'll, I'll split this anyway and I'll have one on each side you know 
one on this side, one on that side, and I already have holes there that I can mount it to. And I got to figure out um, how we're going to make the rear axle work yet. That's the whole situation with this build is uh, there is nothing that is stock going into it, nothing that won't be fabricated in some way or another. And while I have the axle for these big wheels, which is standing up right there, piece of one inch pipe, uh, it's not quite long enough and plus these wheels have bearings in them. And I haven't decided yet. I may leave the bearing on one side um, and only have one wheel drive on this. And you know, I don't think it's really going to need a live axle in it. But yeah, that will uh, work on that. But how do I uh, how do I incorporate that? Do I put a put this through a piece of tubing, and or do I put it on pillow blocks? So I can't put it on pillow blocks unless I mount the pillow blocks to my suspension. Lots of things to work out, you know. And we're going to do with what we got. That's why I kind of switched uh, gears today. As you can see, the motor's sitting over there on the floor. I had it on, and I had the transmission roughed in place. And I actually had drilled out a couple of holes to bolt it in. And if you look down there on the frame, you can see that one big hole, that was where the sprocket came through that would drive to the rear wheels. And the bottom hole lined up with one of the mounting bosses on the transmission. And I had it lined up and had the motor bolted down on the cross member. And I put a, a little belt on it. I don't have one short enough, but put a belt on it to make sure everything was lined up. And wouldn't you know, after all that work, it was turning backwards. I had three gears in reverse and one in forward. Well, as it turns out, these uh, Tecumseh wireless transmissions have two output shafts. I'm uh, cleaning it up as you can see. You got one on each side. It's the same shaft that goes all the way through. See that one turns while I'm turning this one. So all I have to do to get the right direction is to flip it around. But, now that I am flipping it around, whereas originally this was going to sit like this, and the pulley was going to be on the right, and the sprocket was going to be on the bottom, and I had a bolt going in that bottom hole, by flipping it around I have to keep the, spro the uh, pulley on the same side by flipping it around. Now my sprocket is actually going to be above the frame, which is not a big deal, um, but it just means that I drill those holes for nothing. Um, and I have already flipped this lever around so that it's going up again instead of down. And uh, i uh, got to clean this up, not only on the outside, but I'm thinking of taking it apart and uh, making sure everything is oiled up well inside. I found a manual for it online. So we're going to be doing that, and the end, this end here now will have the sprocket on it, and this end over here will have the disc brake on it. They're interchangeable, one side to the other, because obviously they have all kinds of mounting places. These two bolts here are for holding the disc brake pad on. Well, guess what? You have the same exact thing on the other side. And you have these six mounting spots over here, which was what was used in the Montgomery Ward. But you also have four mounting spots on this side. And you have this dooflicky here. You know, with holes in it, that wasn't used for anything before. So, you know, it's got all kinds of possibilities because they used them in all kinds of different 
um, pieces of equipment from lawnmowers to snow blowers and other things, rototillers I guess. So yeah. So that's where we are on that. Um, yeah. These pieces, by the way, nice taper to them. And they work out well. This one I haven't cut to length yet. But it, it'll get cut off about two inches. And all I do is I slide it down until it gets to the point where it matches the profile of my main ring, of my main rail. And uh, that's where I cut it off at. Now, here's the other thing. You know what that came off of? A friend of mine called me this morning and he said, George, there's a couple of a washer and a dryer out front of somebody's house downtown. I don't know if you're interested. Well, I went and looked. I really wasn't interested in a washer and dryer. Scrap prices aren't worth my effort at the moment. And to scrap them out, you have to tear them apart. They don't take them in one piece. They'll take them, but they won't give you anything for them. So this happens to be the other side of a mount for a stacking washer and dryer. And that's exactly what those washer and dryer were. So I told my wife who was with me, I said, you know what, I'm taking those. Those are just what I need to finish off my front frame rail. And sure enough, they do the job and they do it admirably. So, uh, yeah. And you say, well, George, that top piece is a little bit wider than the frame itself. But you know what? By the time I get my uh, motor mount put back on there, you won't be able to tell from the top side. And uh, I may end up putting a filler plate in front. We'll see. Um, you never know what we're going to do. So yeah, that's where we are today with Goofy Cart 2. Um, my seating is pretty well set up because this happens to be a deluxe folding seat that you take when you go to a football game or something like that. You gotta sit on the bleachers. It has a little bit of cushioning on the bottom and I've added some more. And it has the, let me open it up here bounce you around some more. It has the straps on either side so when you push back it only goes back so far and uh, huh it's even green. Don't know if that's the color of the goofy cart's going to be. The original one was gray with uh, well it was very close in color combinations to the gadget bike of all things. It had a gray body, it had cream colored lettering, which my oldest sister did, and the wheels were red. What more could you ask for than that, huh? Uh, I don't know if that's what we're going to do with this. I may just leave this uh, wheelbarrow the green color that it is. I've had this wheelbarrow for over 30 years, and it's done a lot of work. I wheeled a lot of cement with that puppy. Yeah, but it's retired from that kind of hauling now. Now it's going to get hauled around with its own motor. And uh, oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. I know it's getting a little bit long. Hopefully this will be interesting to you. I'm working on my spindles for my front axle. And here's the way it's going to work. This piece of tubing, and it's got to get cut down a little bit more yet. Well, it, it will go in there eventually. Like I said, it's got to get cut down a little bit more. Give it a little more space so I can put um, some neoprene bushings on the top and the bottom. They will go in there. This will be drilled out to fit this which is an axle shaft of some sort, which just happens to be the exact fit for that piece of tubing. And that piece of tubing just happens to be
the tubing that came off the handles that were on the top of this weightlifting bench. They stuck out there and they had uh, rubber covers on them. But they're heavy gauge steel and uh, they're going to work well. And I have some bearings here that with a little bit of modification will fit inside my wire bicycle wheels that I want to use that fit on these bolts. I'm going to get a couple of grade 8 bolts or at least grade 5. This will get welded onto here like that. This will be my spindle for my wheel riding on there. And then uh, these aren't cut out yet but I'm going to make my tie rod um, what will I call them? My swing arms for the tie rods out of this piece of steel and of course a second one will have to be for my drag link. So I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to make my steering work whether my um, steering links will be on top heading back or be on top heading front and which side that I'm going to put my uh, pitman arm on whether this side or the other side over there and I'm going to cut six inches out of my axle it's wider than I had anticipated and so I'm going to cut six inches out of it and I actually have located a spring and a pair of shocks that would work dandy on the front of this uh, but I gotta raise some fun tickets yeah it, they're gonna cost about well, they're asking $80. I could probably get them for 60 or 70 or 75 something like that. They're all brand new from a golf cart. And I'm still looking for a used one, maybe a free one, because free is for me. So that's my update for today. Oh, his universal joint when I need it for my uh, steering. That's off of a Dodge Caravan. I had the whole rack and pinion. <laughs> wow. I had the whole rack and pinion and I scrapped it last fall. Go figure. It would have been perfect. I could have run the rack and pinion right on the front and would have already had the shaft coming out. I just would have had to hook it up. But that's the way it goes. The same thing. I could have had a steering box. Um, or and or a differential uh, because I had a junk snowblower this past winter that I had gotten for free and you see right down in there that could be either a differential with axles on either side or cutting one side off you could make it into a steering box so I'm looking for and hoping that a cheap very cheap or a free snowblower will come online again. I, um, yeah, the last one I have had I got for free, so that's the one I'm hoping for. So the place is a mess. That's what happens when you're working, you know. You just keep pulling stuff out and throwing stuff around, and uh, that's the way it is. So that's how it is today. And this is uh, Tuesday, I think. And I don't even know the date. Sometime in March, the end of March. And this is George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man, saying thanks for watching and following along and for all your kind comments and helpful hints and suggestions. I appreciate them all. And uh, another thing I'm saving my money for is we have a drawing coming up very, very soon. I checked this morning. I think I only need 15 more subscriptions and we'll have 1,500. Thanks for watching. Bye now.